What's up everybody? Trapping with Jinx here! Welcome to another super exciting, awesome episode, Trapping with Jinx. We're going to do ourselves another ADC job. This will be uh, my second and third day on this check. I'm doing an upland bird management property. Uh, he's also managing that property for deer. Uh, you can tell he's invested a lot of money on this property. But just to create that habitat um, for the small game and the birds isn't enough. We're having problems with predators and we're having more specifically problems with raccoons and possums. And so far I've caught eight raccoons and I've caught six possums since I just got started. So I'm looking forward to some more catches today. Whatever we thin out helps him out. And that's part of the thing with trapping. We're going to use trapping to get rid of that overabundance. In this episode, you'll also see, uh, I'm going to talk pricing and how to price these jobs and the different price per animal, price per trip, and what it is that I like to do. I got a lot of really good feedback on my last episode. Go back, watch it if you want. But a lot of the guys had asked about pricing and how to price these. And I'm going to go into, into detail on the, on the end of this video. We're going to have some catches in this video. We're also going to show some, some sets. And uh, we're going to have an awesome time. So I want to give you a little bit of update on what I've been up to. And we're going to go head out on the line. And we'll get with it. You're, you're on another awesome, exciting episode of Trapping with Jinx. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of, of where I've been at on my fur. I'm just wrapping up my fur projects. I've got a lot of my coyotes that are hanging there. Um, and I've got some over here that I just got done doing the other day. They're about ready to come off. And um, I told myself this year that I'm not going to go uh, beaver trapping until I get all my fur done. <laughs> and usually during the season, when I get a, a big heavy snow is when I, when I get caught up on my fur. But I didn't start on any of my fur projects until after the season. So I've got about half a deep freeze left. I'm hoping I can get that knocked out this week. And then uh, I can start doing some beaver trapping. So if you guys like beaver trapping episodes, let me know in the comments section down below. Uh, and I'd be glad to put together some beaver trapping for you guys. I have a few good spots out there already picked. I just have to get caught up on my work before I can go out and play. So that's what I've been up to. Alright, I'm on my chariot. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to show you guys the first half of this line. Because on my last video I showed you guys the last half of the line. And then I'll just show you the catches as we kind of go by. So... A dirt hole right there. No luck today. And I've been catching a possum on this corner right here about every day. Really good location right there. I have to kind of remember how I get around. Bear with me guys. Like I said in this video here, I'm going to talk about uh, pricing a little bit later for you guys. a bone set on this one right here it's in the middle of the trail caught a possum on that the first day just drove over it and then i got a dirt hole right here too it's good really good creek system down here real nice it opens up got a trail off this fence down here Hundred and forty acre piece, pretty good sized piece. It's got a lot of it's got a good timber on it, a couple good creek systems. I have a trap over here in this corner, it hasn't produced yet. Good trail coming off of there.
There's a dirt hole right here. Good spot. There's a nice opening down there. Now, if I was traveling this, uh, I, want, I would want to get down here on these bottom pieces. But this kind of looked like a good spot for me. There, this is woven wire, and then it opens up a little bit. Woven wire, and uh, usually these catch. So I uh, just give it a few more days, and I, I should have a catch. Let's go check. It out. I have a couple sets down here. We're gonna check those. Like a couple of good spots. I'm gonna wait on a coyote to come through. Can't catch overnight sometimes. Got two sets right down here. I don't see nothing bouncing. It is what it is. That's what makes trapping so much fun. Sometimes you never know what you're gonna catch. Let's run the next bit, right? That dirt hole right there. And it's a little tampered with. Let's see what that is right there. Digging on the sides. Just go like that right there. My deer hide's missing. You got a piece of deer hide right there usually. Seen some deer tracks, that's about it. So keep moving. There we go, nice little raccoon. Well, I don't see anything down the creek side. Some of my marshmallows are gone on my DP. I trail them right in here. And, uh, I don't even see my trap there. It's sealed, sealed it in. <laughs> it's my pocket set. But we got this coon up here. That's one more nestrator gone off of this beautiful coon trail. Uh, Dirt hole there, right off of that trail there. Good looking spot. And uh, let's see what we got over here. Got two raccoons right here so far. All right, not bad. Get that dispatched, keep moving. There's this lake system here. This is the dam. You can see this trail. It goes right in through here. And I haven't caught a coon off of that yet. And uh, off target off location right but really good looking trail you got that brush so i was waiting on two raccoons i thought for sure i'd be catching there every day that is what it is sometimes you catch sometimes you don't That's why we... well we're down at our lake now just rolled up got a raccoon hiding on me right there and uh I, i've done pretty good here so far i think i've caught uh at least four here so, <laughs> muddy raccoon. Got another DP right there. It looks still set. So, two for today. That's not bad. Traps aren't always full. Uh, I've got another high bank one up here, and it's still good to go. You've probably seen that on the videos. Well, I we got one over here, I guess. Off of that other nice, beautiful trail. In the background dry raccoon so so two out of four sets right here is not bad and uh yeah good spot to catch these nest raiders is anywhere where that creek water hits you got this grass type stuff behind me and i like to be where they are so anyways we're gonna get that one just best keep moving down the line got this grass is here and I feel like I'm missing I need a trap right here it's gonna go that direction for a while and we got another one going this way I would about imagine right where I'm at now is where I need a trap
there's just too much really good stuff here with that and that i'm not seeing a lot of tracks right in this area here like i'd like to see but uh we gotta have a setting right here i'm totally trapping on on location and i see if i can't squeeze in one set i like this uh little tuft of grass it's about five foot off of my my run we're gonna do a mouse hole set here we got the vol field happening and uh this is gonna be a good productive set for me so i'm gonna get that going got you on my head hopefully you guys can see this set okay so i got my bed kind of picked out and uh it's a step down like mouse hole i'm going at a 90. There's my hole. I like that just the way that it is. That's what's left in my T-bar or my pogo. Usually the handles come out farther. <laughs> That's about usually what I get out of one season. I'm going with a one and a half. I'm gonna catch a coyote in a one and a half. You wait and see guys. So don't be knocking me. Usually I like my 550s, but my 550s aren't modified to hold raccoons. And I wish they kind of do a better job of that. So I plan on catching him in a one and a half. You know, if I had a 175 or a two square jaw, it would be even better. But I'm just going with what I got right now. All right, so I got it bedded in just the way I like it. I'm sprinkling dry dirt over that. And that's pretty much about my set now I don't like to do a lot of this digging because the the lure the hole in itself I'm gonna go subtle with this one so I might add a little more dry dirt on the sides just to confuse him a little bit if he steps on it it's gonna be soft or it's gonna be dry there that's my set don't need to do anything else other than maybe maybe it'll make a little crater right there i'm gonna break for my bait and lure all right so i'm gonna go do something entirely different i'm experimenting on this i do catch with this uh mega mouse or mouse meat bait by dunlap time of death it's more of a subtle but it, it's a mouse base so there's a mouse hole we're in a vole field i think they're going to be looking for voles let's give them what they're looking for that's it that's what i'm going to do on bait on this one and then i'm going to just sprinkle the backing with some urine that might be my call other than that i'm not going to get real wild so we're trying something entirely different from all my other sets and uh kind of liking that so far gonna get rid of this let that go right down the middle of this there's a brush pile right here they're hunting this usually there'll be one hunt in the middle and then one on the outside and they flush game back and forth good looking set right here and uh just a little off so my coyote that's running right along the edge looking for something flush out i just gave them a nice opportunity to stick their foot right next to that hole all right let's keep moving down the line okay so we're just gonna drive this down to this corner and you got all that looks good and i know they're hunting these filter strips i mean there's literally if there's coyotes here this is where they would be i need to get one back in this corner and i might set it closer to the wood side of this I think that's what I'll do. All right, so you can see where I just was. I think I'm gonna set it. This looks really, all this looks good. There's a good trail going that way. And uh, I'm gonna get something in right here. I just, it's, it's too good not to have something here. 
Uh, even right here is good location. And I think there's another trail that comes off. So it's just a matter of making up my mind where I want it at this point. Okay, so I picked this spot. The fence line goes that away. And then there's a break right here. The prevailing wind is going this direction. I went with a regular dirt hole. I'm going to leave it like that. And then I've got this nice trail coming off. This is on the the opposite side of what I just said. One's running down one side, or one's running down the other side. And they can't miss this, so. Mm, about six inches off the hole, so. It's a little tight. But, uh, that's what we're going with. <laughs> and I probably will sprinkle. I'm gonna blend this one a little better. So we got this dry dirt. I don't think it's gonna get cold for a while. Yeah, I better leave the dry dirt there. If it gets cold and I sprinkle the wet stuff on top, it'll freeze a layer on top of my trap on fire. That's pretty inviting. And I might just do it just because. All right, so made up my mind. <laughs> I like the way that hole kind of looks. And we're gonna use the backing. I'm gonna spritz some urine probably on the backing. I used fox urine over there. And I'm kind of trying some stuff that's just a little on the different side. There. That blends a little bit better. This is stuff's wet. So it's heavy. But there we go. Alright, so here's what I'm gonna do guys. Powder River O'Gorman going in the hole. Coyote Frenzy going to the right side. And fox urine on the top of the backing. It's a 3-2 punch. Mm, it's kind of gooey. Gooey stuff. And all of that's all kind of right, right here. So I got to get him to step. And I'm going to put that coyote frenzy right back. A little bit airborne, not much. Just in case it decides it wants to hit a little of that that wind and then just just a little bit right there right over the top of that backing and that's my set pretty simple looking set i think it'll produce and i'm not going to worry about it i don't think it's going to produce i know it's going to produce it's just a matter of time i keep driving by all these bull runs and i thought well you know somebody would like to see that's a bull run right there you see that there's these little bitty holes. Little bitty holes, just about like the size that I, you can just barely see it. Just like the size I just imitated on my first set. So, I just thought I'd share that with you. These, these are just plumb full of holes. And uh, I, I'm trying to create a set that looks similar to that. And uh, yeah, that's what the coyote's kind of after. Other than the rabbits and, and the, uh, the birds. Well, I'm trying to cut the video shorter for you guys. I apologize. Hope you guys like this content. I got another catch for you. Uh, catching lots of raccoons today. Not a bad day. Just on the crossover. Nice big dentry cottonwood. DP. Pretty simple set. Got another DP over here. Where it pulls down, I haven't cut one on it yet. I figure with the trail here and then this pop out, that's a good spot for it. And there's a good trail that comes across here. But uh, I haven't connected there. You kind of find the good, the real hot spots early. And then uh, this is the third day on these two sets here. So 
but uh, they like this the creek systems seems to be where I'm catching most of them right now is along the creek system so apparently that's where they're feeding not a bad raccoon we'll get that uh, dispatched and keep moving well not a bad raccoon uh, but he's got a huge rub behind his neck and that's kind of what happens when you catch them late like that thought I'd share with you guys the reset real quick on this uh, nice dry <laughs> Opportunity to take one marshmallow, go right through the middle of that, just like this. I try to get it on that on that deal. And then I usually will put if I can get another one behind it, I will. I put too many marshmallows behind that, the trigger will pop. And then uh, I set it. And the only reason why I thought I'd share this with you because there's probably one person on the channel that's never seen that. Just poke that down on the ground just like that. And uh, open up the trail if I can. Put maybe another one right in there. A couple marshmallows on the outside. I like to give them a nice little treat on the outside. And I usually put the marshmallows on the trail. So if, you, if you're any... And that's pretty much it. I'll either put a collar on that. I like fish oil though. But let's try a collar. I'm just using a collar. And I'm going to go a little bit on the top. And that'll help draw them. That's my set. It took me like not even a minute to do that. It helped that the DP wasn't full of mud though, right? <laughs> All right, we're gonna keep moving down the line, getting lots of lots of uh, good information in this one, and I might even throw some fish oil up both directions. That'll kind of help draw them to my DP. Another good location on this one here. I'm kind of waiting on the coyote to come through there though. But uh, doing pretty good so far. And he's been chewing on that one and a half. And uh, don't have him by much. So. Okay guys, so we're getting towards the end of the video. I'm gonna talk a little bit about pricing, uh, but I wanna do a recap on what we've been catching. Uh, I think I ended up catching five raccoons today. So really not bad, uh, can't beat that at all. The weather's been kind of nice and uh, it's probably why I'm catching the raccoons. No possums today, but uh, is what it is, right? And I should hopefully get to catching some coyotes here soon. I'm gonna go set a couple more coyote sets uh, back in that timber uh, on the other fence line. But other than that, um, I'm gonna do some talking real quick about pricing. That's kind of the strategy uh, for the day, but I hope you guys like this episode, um, and, uh, I can keep creating more content like it. If you guys like, uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Your guys' support is really important on, uh, the continuation of these videos off season. So, okay guys, so this is the end of the video. I'm going to talk to you about pricing an ADC job. So, um, to make a long story short, I've been full time, been blessed to be full time in the damage control business since 2007. I do a lot of residential work. That's usually my bread and butter. Um, however, there's a couple months out of the year that's what I consider my off season. And I like to fur trap, and I like to provide this type of services towards uh, my landowners, ranchers, that sort of stuff. And it's, it's really good for us as trappers. So, um, so I've been doing this for quite a while. Uh, the pricing can be three different ways. Uh, you can probably the, the, the best thing I could say if you're a trapper um, and you, you're thinking about doing this, sometimes it might be best before you start taking money, before you start taking business, uh, to just trap for fun uh, and then trap to barter for service. Like, so if somebody had a problem with beavers um, and you like to, to turkey hunt, uh, you might offer. Uh, getting rid of beavers for people and then maybe in exchange for turkey hunting you could do that and you're not a business in that in that capacity 
So bartering is usually a good good way to open up new doors to hunting and trapping properties. And you could literally just be plump full of all the property that you want. However, if you want to make money doing this and be a business, anytime you take money, you're a business now. So uh, usually you're going to have a lot of headaches with being a business. So you have liabilities of the traps. Uh, you have to worry about catching somebody's domestics. You have to tell people, hey, you have to put your dogs up while I'm doing this. Um, and there's really a lot of times, there's a lot of headaches in being a business. So just keep that in mind. Also follow your state laws and regulations. Some, some people have, when you start taking money, you have to get a license in some of your states. So you wanna make sure you wanna follow all your state laws and regulations. Taxes, same way, you know, now your business, you gotta start worrying about that sort of stuff. But if you are considering uh, doing this and, and supplementing your income, uh, there's three different ways to price this type of service. So people are gonna hire you one of two things, Either they don't have the time, or two, they don't have the knowledge. That's why they're hiring you. And so as trappers, you're going to have the knowledge you've been catching, um, and you're just going to have to make time, of course. So uh, three different ways I say there's the price per animal. So guys charge by what they catch. So like I caught five raccoons today. If I price that at five, $50 a piece, for example, that'd be $250. Now, some days I don't, I don't catch, you know, uh, and then I'm not making any money on this. So it, it's a little bit one side or the other, um, same way I have to catch, you know, when you trap, trap per animal. Um, there's pros and cons with that. Um, I don't, I personally don't like that method. Uh, usually when I sell that, somebody's wondering how much is this gonna cost? What if you catch 10 raccoons, you know what I mean? And you could set that dollar figure for yourself. The second way is what I like to do. I charge a setup fee to set traps and to pull traps. And then I give them a week in duration for those traps. Like this property is 140 acres. I guaranteed to set 24 traps. I set 34, I think, for them. So they're getting some quality there. And then, um, so I charge a setup fee to set and to pull. And that's usually a pretty good amount of money so you know I need that up front uh, or the day that I start and then I, I, I charge per trip so whatever I catch during the day it doesn't matter um, I'm gonna spend an hour and a half I think today's two hours and then I, I have to make it worth my time so I charge a, an X amount of money per trip uh, whether that be 70 bucks 80 bucks 100 bucks you know figure out what an hour or two of your time's worth some gas um, and always factor in, you know, you got to drive around on these properties, access. Um, and that's the per trip model. The third, third model is a flat rate. Just say, hey, you know, I'll go in, I'll trap a week. I need 1500 bucks, you know, and don't care what you catch. Bad thing about that is uh, two things. Uh, as trappers, we always fight the weather. And there's a, a degree of unpredictability on whether or not you're going to catch. So, you know, if, if you go in on a week that's not good and you just don't catch then it's a little short on their side. So you might have to give them a few extra days just as a consideration, or you know, you might have to take a loss. So that's, that's kind of how you learn how to price some of these. Um, there's not a real, real set way. I think if you talk to 10 ADC guys, you're gonna get 10 different responses, generally. The best thing is to just see what other people in your area are charging to get an idea how much, like I'm in a rural area, I can't charge very much money. I just can't because there's a lot of trappers out there. So there's competition. Um, and the same thing, if you're in an urban area, you're gonna need to charge more because it costs more money to, to live. You, you might have business licenses you gotta have and a lot of headaches. So just always consider that. Um, if you have any other further questions, just ask me or send me an email. I'd be glad to help you out as much as I can. Um, through 16 years of doing this, uh, you know, I, I kind of feel like I've seen it all, but at the same time, I become more comfortable now with where I'm at and my pricing. And on this job here, I, I already know I'm gonna have to raise it for next year, but he's gonna get a good quality service. And that's what I, I really stress. Make sure that you offer quality service and don't undercut yourself, okay? So there we go, that's pricing on an ADC job. Um, I hope you guys like that. I'm sorry it was a little windy today, but uh, we had some good catches, good video. 
Um, if you get a chance and you're new, make sure you hit subscribe. Otherwise, click the big thumbs up. Helps me a lot. Leave me a nice comment. If you'd like to see these type of videos, let me know. Um, be glad to keep putting them out for you if I get a lot of good feedback. So, I'm Jinx. Have a great day.